everybody we got a new distiller but wait a minute let me stop you there you need to see what i had to go through to build this damn thing so let's start this right here is the pipe i made it out of as you can see it's a pretty it's a pretty old pipe um but the most important thing you need to note is that it has this really thick coating of paint and the moment i started grinding it off look at that pure cancer dust right there Brexit in the manifested flesh, baby. So I had to put my respirator on, had to put everything on, you know what I'm saying? The whole hazmat suit to grind this crap. Look at all this. It looks like it looks like a snow field out here, you know? Like, it's absolutely crazy. And grinding this, it definitely took a while to go all the way around. And look at me, I ended up looking like a damn crayon in the end. Had to pose on them, just like a crayon. So... Went ahead, blew all this dust off of here. And blew it off myself too. Got all that dust off my nuts for once. Now, I had to cut the base for this. Typical sheet metal work you've seen me do all the time. So as we see, it fits on there nice and well. And after that, I had to cut the flanges for this. And the flange is quite self-explanatory, just two pieces of metal that we're gonna drill holes in so we can put bolts into them. One piece of metal was actually welded to the reactor, completely airtight welded, and the other one is like the lid, and that will be what can come off and go on. So you see, I measure them out, I cut them out. It's the same stuff you see me do. So to be honest with you, I really stopped recording after I cut out these flanges because the rest was just drilling the holes with the drill press and then welding everything together. Stuff you see me do a hundred times at this point, you know what I, what, how we do. I just wanted to show you I look like a crayon in the end. So here we are again, back to where we started, this beautiful, beautiful distiller. So let's take a look at it and all of its features. So, as you see, there is a big difference. I did remove the coil bucket completely from this thing. It just, it was, it was kind of ghetto, I won't lie, you know. And it, it overall, it didn't work, so I replaced it with my Liebig and just my Liebig. As you know before, I didn't have my Liebig system plumbed together. I actually had to buy a whole new pump because my old pumps did not have the proper specifications or they probably were just weak. But anyway, as you can see, I loaded this thing really nice and good. I think it looks really good in the end, honestly. And it's nice and airtight welded. I put some silicone between it. And this thing is an... It could, it could be a pressure chamber, you know. Like, this thing is airtight. It's more airtight than my reactor. So that's really good. Um, exactly what we want. So you see here, I also have a feed port for feeding in an inert gas to push all the oxygen out in there. If I want to do that. And I also have a continuous feed port, a double valve system, so I can open one valve, this top valve here, pour oil in, and then open the other valve while having the top valve closed and so nothing shoots out. And this right here is the packing column. This is full of scrubbies and copper uh, stuff, as well as a thermometer up there. Um, and yeah, I mean, this is pretty much it right here. And it goes down into the measuring cup, so let's get this thing started. So... I had to get some pure pyrolysis oil first. So it took about a day to get this much. And you see, I get it right from the reactor and I put it in the separatory funnel because I'd say at least half of all pyrolysis oil is water. And that's because, you know, there's some oxygen in plastics. There's some hydrogen in plastics. There's oxygen in the reactor and hydrogen in the reactor. They're going to combine. They're going to find each other. They're going to mate and make water. Come on now. So anyway, I put it in this funnel. You see it's starting to separate. And it, I would say, yeah, it was actually a good bit of oil, a good bit of water. You know, half and half, maybe a little bit more of the other than one. Of course, when we do this, there will always be some oil in this water. 
this water is not clean. I would not pour it down the drain. I would not pour it on the ground. It needs to be cleaned for safety measures. And I will be making a video on me cleaning all the potentially contaminated water because that's that is a very important factor in all of this you know we don't want to pollute anything while doing any of this so you could see maybe i didn't let it set for long enough but sometimes i was having problems separating the last bit of it i pour it out then it would kind of like all come out together and then some water would separate out some more so maybe i should just let it set longer but either way i got all that water out eventually and I went to pour this oil out, and it is just the oil. And you can see, it actually, when the water's removed, it looks pretty good. You know, it has more like an orange tone to it. Now, what's interesting is some pyrolysis oil is different than others. You know, this in particular was pyrolysis of um, plastic with motor oil in there as a, a co-pyrolysis. Uh, but also, I don't really know exactly what types of plastic I put in there. I put everything in there. Sometimes I get oil that's a lot darker. So, you know, it's not really good control uh, <laughs> by any means, but you see we got it. And it's all put together. It does look kind of dark. And we have 250 mil of this stuff. I know you can't see the lines on the camera, but I'm telling you, you can trust me. So I'm going to go ahead and open both of these valves for this feed port. And we're going to put this 250 mil in here. Now, I know this camera is quite shaky, but you have to understand, not only did I have to lift this thing and the camera above my head, but both of them were with one hand, and I was not trying to spill it everywhere and make a tsunami of oil, okay? So, if you have any issue with the camera shaking, then, you know, we're just going to have to live life. You know, save 15% more with Geico Health Insurance, okay? Anyways, let's go ahead and get this oxygen out of here. So, I'm using my microwave pyrolysis gas compressed in a modified propane tank to get this oxygen out. You see it screws right into this port perfectly. Go ahead and turn it on. And this is just going to push the oxygen out so we don't have any, any oxygenated things forming, you know, any dioxins or anything reacting with oxygen. And as you see, since I can light the gas at the end, that means that all the oxygen's out so let's get this thing started right i do want to say as you can see over there i have two yoga balls full of microwave pyrolysis gas but this tank is pretty low in terms of how much is in there so i'm going to run this thing off of propane today just so i can actually have an accurate run you know i don't want to be running this in the middle of it i run out of um pyrolysis gas i need to compress that gas into the tank so anyways we're going to run this off of propane and Turn on the thermometer. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the Liebig. Actually, you know, you don't even have to turn on the Liebig right away, you know, because this thing takes a while before stuff even starts coming over. So you don't even have to, but yeah, as you can see, it works pretty good. I mean, this is the OG Liebig from, from way back. <laughs> so I, I love to see it. You can see our starting temperatures, 92 degrees Fahrenheit, 33 degrees centigrade. So, after about an hour of running, I would say these pipes are starting to get just a little bit warm to the touch, but the temperature is exactly the same. 93 degrees Fahrenheit, 33 or 34-ish degrees centigrade. So like I said, it's been an hour and you can see on the outside thermometer, this is the temperature of the actual outside of the distillery. So the inside probably is hotter, right? But it's around uh, 330 Fahrenheit, almost 200 centigrade. Four hundred Fahrenheit. And you can see it, I'm keeping the flame really low and slow, baby. You know, we slow cooking this like some collard greens or something. Because, you know, I've I was rushing all my other stuff before, and when you rush distillation stuff always messes up. But you can see after an hour and 30 minutes in, we're still at the exact same temperature, nothing coming over. Even when I open this port below the, the packed column, no vapors come out. So I'm like, something's wrong. Um, I need to bump up this temperature. You know, I'm, I'm gonna change stuff up. So I bumped up the temperature just a little bit. Uh, and you can see almost immediately, this is helping 104 degrees Fahrenheit, 40 degrees centigrade within about 10 minutes. And literally after I turn the camera off, stuff started coming over 
Uh, and the temperature jumped up so quickly, literally in just like a couple seconds, it jumped to 182 Fahrenheit and 83 degrees centigrade, and I was surprised. I'm like, what the heck? You know, I just barely turned the temperature up, but that was a little bit of push it needed. And it made all this dark oil, and it came out in like a big gush at first, and I'm like, what in the world? But eventually, it slowed down, and it started making these nice golden drops. And I was like, whoa. Okay, so let me change the flask here so we can just get that golden the golden elixir that's coming out of there, right? And you can see the stuff is beautiful. One and the temperature at this point was really going up and down, fluctuating a lot. Uh just look at the thing, you know, 80 centigrade, 81 centigrade, you know, it's just going up and down. It wasn't really staying stable in any way, so I don't really know what's up with all that. You guys tell me what's up with all that, but I wanted to do a little sample run with this oil here uh, because I wanted to make sure it wasn't like ethanol or something. I wanted to make sure it was actual oil. So you see, I poured it in this little beaker with some water. And this is the best test because, you know, gasoline or oils don't mix with water. And you see, no matter how much I would shake it up, it would not mix with the water. So I was quite excited. You know, this is pretty promising. This is, it has a nice color to it, a pretty good viscosity, and it's not mixing with water. So this may be close to gasoline, I was thinking. I wanted to see the flash point next. So I went ahead, I lit it, and the, the flash point's good. Uh, I don't know if it, it would, I would say it burns as explosively as gasoline. You know, I'm sure if I had that much gasoline in here, it probably would have like lit up really quickly and gone down really quickly. So this does have a little bit of a different characteristic, but at the same time, you know, gasoline does have additives in it that make it the octane higher and all that type of stuff. So uh, maybe if I add ethanol to this, maybe it'll burn better and quicker. But as you see, there's a little time lapse here of this oil being collected. So as you can see, these were the end products. We did get this little bit of dark sludgy oil that came out. We're well, not really sludgy, but that's kind of like the regular oil the, that we put in. Then we got this product, this gasoline-esque product. You see the viscosity is really good, and there's some contaminants in there. And that was actually some water that had some contaminants in it. So when I remove the water, look at this stuff. It's like a golden elixir. It's so beautiful. Oh my goodness. Look at it. And you see, when it was coming out of the, 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 um, the funnel, it was golden. And when it's in here, it's kind of more amber and brown. But I just can't get over how beautiful this looks. It's see-through everything. And, and I'm just, like, I'm mesmerized. You know, I'm infatuated. I, I, I can't, I can't, I don't have to take a sip. I, I'm sorry, guys. I had to take a sip. Oh, oh my goodness. Ooh, that was good. You, you think mad gasoline? We're going to see next engine. We're going to put this in the engine. The next episode, we're going to put this in the engine. Take care, guys.